the raw material we start from raw material okay we just uh, quickly go through them the all or crude material you excavate them from the field they directly mine from natural deposit with minimum processing okay the purity well uh, whatever you get, get out from the field particle size mm, essentially whatever you get out from the field not too much control the e examples we give you one example this is called the uh, crude bulk site essentially aluminum hydroxide aluminum hydroxide and some different uh, degree of hydration different degree of hydration and uh, other clays okay so people would use them as a raw material to fabricate industry scale aluminum oxide. Industry minerals, the minerals that uh, you get it out uh, processed a little bit after beneficiating, crushing or grinding and separated them in certain ways to have major impurity removed, but uh, the minor ones you don't have time or money to, to deal with them. You just put them together, okay? The purity is slightly better, 80% to 95%, not, not very high purity, um, roughly pure, put it that way, roughly pure. Particle size, one to 100 micron or even larger. And we give some examples, calling for white wire, which is essentially your washing basin, your sit-on toilet, that's calling. Uh, people get them. Essentially, that's aluminum silicate hydrohydrate. Talc for the ceramic tile, okay, for the roof and for other applications. Essentially, magnesium silicate high with hydration. Felt spa for fluxes in white wire and glazes. You give the shiny appearance to the China wire, okay? That's complicated composition, as you see, a lot of them are complicated composition. Quartz for white wire refractory or for special um, optical applications. Zircon for refractory. These are the some of the common examples. But actually for technical ceramics, we don't often use these. These are for more traditional ceramics, okay? And then going to the higher level is so-called industry or inorganic chemical or ceramics, industry. Kind of you get all, do some processing, some of these, and then you do further processing. These are chemicals or ceramic powder that gone through significant chemical processing or refinement for much better purity and consistency okay these are purity quite often they have to be above 98 percent reasonably pure particle size now much narrower we don't have like one millimeter uh, particles okay these are calcined aluminum oxide calcined magnesium oxide Titanium oxide, what is this? Barium, titanium oxide, silicon carbide. These are industry chemicals or industry ceramic powders. And of course, there are special um, inorganic chemical or ceramics. They are even further processed for high purity or for special physical characteristics. For them, sometimes you want the purity to be very, very high, 99.9. .9. For electronic ceramics, you don't want high leakage or something. You want the purity to go even higher, 99.9%. .9%. The particle size, you may want to control them be below 0.2 micron, as opposed to up to 10 micron, as opposed to 10, 100, okay? These are highly specialized uh, powder, like uh, nano, yttria stabilized zirconia, or Yttrium oxide stabilizes the conium dioxide. Highly specialized chemicals. Okay. And uh, of course, there are other non powder form of chemicals 
liquid and gas, for example, C, silicon, hydrogen, silane, essentially. Uh, tickle, people call tickle, titanium, tetrachloride. These are specialized industry chemicals, may not be solid. Actually, these two, one is gas, one is liquid for high purity processing to get them. These are all your different materials. You see, as an engineer, you choose between all of these. If you are dealing with traditional ceramics, white well, you probably do not need extremely high purity. For the roof tile, do you need high purity like this? No, right? For cost, you don't need, right? But for semiconductor processing, for high purity stuff, you may be starting from here. Down here, pure and pure, but the cost goes higher and higher. As an engineer or scientist, you weigh the pros and cons, weigh your application and select. It's not like the pure, the better, depending on what you need. Make sense? For roof tile, for cement on the ground, for building, I do not need high purity as long as it has reached certain strengths. That's enough. Make sense? But when you talk about the magnetic, electrical, all that optical property, then you need high purity. Okay? Okay?